This is an example of a problem where we're asked to use the chain rule to find the first parcels, but we're not given explicit functions. Instead, we're given some information about the functions and the function and its partials at particular points. So we've got r is a function of u. Well, r is a function of is actually a g. G is a function of u and v. Both u and v are functions of s and t. Tells you everything's differentiable, so we won't worry about that. It gives us values of the u and the partials of u with respect to s and t at the point 1, 2. Does the exact same thing for v. And it also tells us something about the partials of g with respect to u and v at the point 5, 7. It then asks us to find the partial with respect to s and t for r at the point 1, 2. All right, we want to differentiate with respect to s. Well, again, r really is this function g. g is defined in terms of u and v, but then each of u and v are defined in terms of s and t. So if I want the partial with respect to s, I've got to differentiate the g with respect to u first, and then differentiate the u with respect to s, and then do the same thing with the v. Parcel of g with respect to v times the parcel of v with respect to s. Okay, so really I don't have explicit functions, so the best I can do is write it in terms of the symbols that we have. I know something about the partial of g with respect to u, right? So I'm just going to replace this symbol with this symbol. Partial is g with respect to u. Now again, we're supposed to put the point 1, 2 in here. So I need to put the point 1, 2 in for u and for v. Notice when we're differentiating the g with respect to u, I'm not differentiating the inside. So this really is just a u and this is a v. Here, I'm differentiating with respect to s, so I'll just use the different symbol for that. And again, we're putting in the point 1, 2. And likewise, we're doing the exact same thing over here. I'm just doing it with for v as opposed to u. A, okay, so now I notice u of 1, 2 is given to us as 5, and v of 1, 2 is given to us as 7. So I replace this mess, if you will, inside these parentheses with just a 5, 7. And do the same thing in the second term. We also know that the partial of u with respect to s at 1, 2 is 4, and the partial of v with respect to s at 1, 2 is 2. So I can replace those numbers as well. Finally, we're given the partial with respect to u and v for g at the point 5, 7, because we get 9 for the first one and negative 2 for the second, so we can replace those with numbers. And if we go do it through and do the arithmetic, we get 32. The second part is very, very similar, except that we replace, instead of partial of u with respect to s, we have partial of u with respect to t, and instead of partial of v with respect to s, we have partial of v with respect to t. It's the only difference from part one to part two. We're just changing that other variable that we're differentiating with respect to. The u and the v stay the same. So notice in those first pieces, we get the partial with respect to u for g at 5, 7, and the partial with respect to v for g at 5, 7. It's the same reasoning why, because that didn't change. Those point numbers are still 9 and negative 2. However, now we're looking at the partial with respect to t both for both u and v. The first one gives me negative 3. That's what's over here they give us. The second one is 6. That's what we give us here. Again, we plug those in and simplify the arithmetic, and we get negative 39.